welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today for our Donor Box Power Up nonprofit fundraising bootcamp series. My name is Jenna, and I am the nonprofit advocate here at DonorBox. And again, we have Killian and Abajoy behind the scenes helping out. Abajoy's name is showing up as mine, so uh, thanks, guys. And for those of you who are not familiar with DonorBox, we provide nonprofits with simple and effective tools to manage their online fundraising activities and connect with individual donors on a deeper level. To date, we have helped 50,000 organizations across the globe raise over $900 million. To learn more, you can visit us on our site at donorbox.org. Now, I want to start out by recognizing that this has been a tough nearly two years for the nonprofit sector with the ongoing pandemic, right? Um, According to a survey conducted in June 2020 by the independent sector, nonprofits saw an 83% decrease in earned revenue, a 53% decrease in individual giving, and a 33% decrease in philanthropic grants with limited resources and an even more limited time frame in which to act you guys, nonprofits were forced to rethink how you delivered services, operations, and fundraising campaigns, right? But despite these challenges, nonprofits have come out on the other side in 2021. And with that, digital fundraising has become a lifesaver for many nonprofits with new opportunities to reach a larger audience and the ability to automate and integrate campaigns and steward no, new donors and build stronger relationships with the donor base that you already have. So before we really dive into the good stuff, I wanna take a moment to celebrate and thank all of you for your tireless work, for your tenacity, for your heart to serve, and for all that you do for your community no matter the circumstance. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so we created this Power Up series to inspire our current and potential donor box users to get ready for the biggest giving season of the year and end 2021, whoa, 2021 with a bang. As you know, Giving Tuesday and Year End are both coming up really quickly. Giving Tuesdays in just a couple of months in November. So the time to start preparing for your next big campaign is right now. So this series will help you optimize your donation pages, engage and manage your donors, track growth, and launch your next big campaign armed with impactful strategies that have proven success. So we'll be hosting a one hour session every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through October 5th to keep the momentum going. So join me every Tuesday so we can hang out and learn important stuff. And if you cannot attend one of these sessions, that's totally okay. We have got you covered like we always do. You will receive the recording and all the resources and assignments mentioned in this session and all of the sessions via email. And you'll also still be able to participate in our donor box power up discussion forum. Don't worry. So we'll also provide you with a couple of actionable tasks at the end of each session. These will only take you a few minutes to complete and will help you apply to what you've learned to your fundraising initiatives. And again, you'll be able to share your work in our Power Up discussion forum, ask questions, and get feedback from community managers and your peers. This is a really awesome collaborative space. And if you complete these actionable tasks, all of them at the end of your fourth session, I promise you, you will be more than ready to launch your next big fundraising campaign. Okay, are we ready? Without further ado, I'm seeing someone logging in from Key Largo. I'm very jealous. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna steal a sip of water. So starting with level one, we'll go over easy features and actionable items that 
Anyone of any skill level can implement in just a few minutes. That will have a massive impact for your nonprofit. And like I said, what we're concentrating today is quick and easy. And here's what you'll take away. Ways to optimize your donation page and form. Tips and tricks to converting website visitors to donors and how to drive strong engagement through crowdfunding. Ryan, yes, it is bubbly. I'm obsessed with seltzer water. <laughs> All right, so I've got a question for you. Abjoy, if you would go ahead and launch that poll for me, please. I'm sure you noticed the phrase non-techies in the title of this session. On a scale of one to five, how tech savvy would you say you are? I would say one being not tech savvy at all. You don't even know how you ended up on this webinar today. So mysterious. And five being your total tech pro. You're watching this webinar right now, casting from your iPad onto your smart TV with your Bluetooth headphones on and you're live tweeting about this event right now. And it looks like we're kind of across the board here. We've got um, most of you guys in the middle at about a three. Admittedly, that's where I am at as well. I'm tech savvy enough to figure out how to do these webinars and easily navigate through DonorBox's campaign creator. But if you ask me to put a contact in an iPhone, I will have to Google it first. I have no idea. OK, yeah, so we're all kind of right in the middle. That's not too bad. That's actually not at all what I was expecting, so that's good to know. And I'm going to go ahead and ask you a follow-up question with that. Where are you in your fundraising journey with DonorBox? Abajoy, can you launch that poll for us, please? Thank you, thank you. So maybe you have signed up, but you haven't created your first campaign yet. Or maybe you've created your first campaign and you're starting to bring in some funds. Perhaps you're a seasoned user and you've been raking in the funds for a while now and you know exactly everything, all the little details of DonorBox and its awesome features. Or maybe you haven't signed up for DonorBox but you're planning to soon. So it looks like you guys are users already for the most part. That is great to know. And if you signed up and you haven't launched yet, I hope that this inspires you to go through the fun process of creating your first campaign and starting to launch. All right, let me navigate back to the <laughs> Jennifer. Just do it. Thank you. Yes, just do it. I don't think that's our motto. <laughs> It's changed our fundraising. Thank you, Jennifer, I really appreciate it. So, first things first, everyone. Let's talk about the power of a great donation form. We are DonorBox after all. So, in 2019, online giving totaled $511 million on Giving Tuesday, marking a 28% increase in online donations from previous years. This amount further rose to $808 million in 2020. These are massive numbers, $808 million in 2020 for Giving Tuesday, that's incredible. So an online donation page probably shouldn't be your only path to accepting donations, but it should be an important part of a holistic fundraising strategy. The conversion rate of a well-optimized donation page can be a major game changer. Think about it this way. If you get 1,000 visitors to your online donation form and only 1% convert into donors, you still have 10 new donors. That's great. But if you get 1,000 visits to your online donation form and three, just 3% 3 convert into donors, you have 30 new donors, that is growth. That should not be disregarded. So needless to say, the time to optimize your nonprofit's fundraising tools is now, and that is why we are here today. So this leads me to optimization tip number one for your donation page. Make your call to action easy to find. Your donate button is the main call to action on your website. You may run fundraising campaigns on various 
online channels such as email or social media, and your donate button will remain your call to action for donors coming in from every single one of those platforms. A great donation button should capture someone's attention right away and be easy to locate. And optimizing your donate button, your website, your landing pages, and your donation page will lead to an increase in online donations. In essence, your donate button should act as an invitation for your website visitors to support your nonprofit. And like I said, the location of your donate button can mean the difference between getting that donation or not. Most visitors to your website may already know about you. You've either made them curious or won them over at an event or with a social media post or a mailing that you sent out. And when these visitors come to your website, they probably already want to donate. So you've won half the battle and that's a big battle. Website viewers need to see your donate button within the first second. First second, not minute, first second of viewing your website. And because the average time spent on a website is only 10 to 20 seconds. So it should not take more than a click or two to find where to donate. And making your donate button stand out properly can result in a 190% increase in online donations. 190% increase just for making your button stand out. I think that's a no brainer, right? So I'm using this cute example to show you um, a great donate button. You should put your donate button somewhere that doesn't change as your, na your user navigates on your website. And uh, we here at DonorBox call that making your donate button sticky. Typically, you should see that donate button from every page of your website, and it's usually in the upper portion of each page. Placing it above a navigation bar is a good practice to make it noticeable. And then you should use color. Colorful, high contrast donate buttons are more eye-catching and perform better. And if you're not sure what color to use, uh, here are some suggestions for you. Just pick a bright color, one that's different from the colors on your website, or uh, use a color wheel. See what colors are complementary to each other. I think that's a good tip. And then also, use white space around your donate button. This can command attention and have your donate button stand out on your website really well. And this is kind of utilizing donor psychology or psychology in general. A lot of white space allows room to think and then to focus, to narrow your focus onto something, kind of like uh, this slide right now. Lots of white space drives your attention right to the middle where the images are. And, oops, okay, there we go. Now, as you'll notice, these screenshots that are shared are pretty small, right? Uh, if you're watching on your cell phone or on your tablet or on your laptop, this is probably a pretty small screen, but you can immediately tell where the donate button is on these websites because they're one, they're well-placed, and two, they stand out with a nice bright color. And, one last point on placement. Now that you've put in the work to make your donate button beautiful and colorful, you should incorporate your donate button into everything, your blog, your emails, using our easy embed codes. And you can share these embed codes with your board too. Get your boards on board. Get your boards on board. Get your volunteers on board. Have them embed your beautiful, shiny beacon of a donate button in their emails as well. And with your donate button comes a great compelling message and you should include that above your donate button. This can help in convincing visitors who are still on the fence about donating. So look at the CTA in this example. Help us make a bigger impact. Donate now. That's super simple, but it's concise and it's actionable. And here are some more good examples of CTAs that you could use. Join the fight, take action, transform lives today, make a difference in 2022, save the children. 
the point is you can be creative, but make sure that the average website visitor knows what you are asking. So I wanna see in the chat right now, what is your CTA above your donate button or your donation form, or what would it be? I'm gonna take a moment to pause here so I can see some of those responses come in. Share your CTAs, y'all. Donate now, simple, concise. I like it, Jake, thank you for sharing. Make impact count. Join the movement. Rescue a family today. Oh, that just tugged at my heartstrings. Well, that's very good. Help build the future. Be a world changer. Help public domain. Become a friend of, for the love of animals. Oh, I love that, Julie. Help us grow. Make tomorrow a brighter day. Uplift the world. Be a part of the change. Help us to help others. Support our mission. These are all really good. You guys are doing a great job already. Be a hero. I like how the B is with a double E. Can you tell me what your mission is? Now I've got to know. <laughs> awesome. These are really, really good. Be a champion of democracy. Make recovery possible. Help transform lives. All, I encourage you to scroll through these comments and get inspired. If you don't have a CTA or you're thinking about changing it, there are some really, really great ones in here. Thanks for sharing. Okay, are we ready to move on? So I wanna show you an example here. It's a little bit more zoomed in of an organization that did a really great job utilizing the power of their donate button. I love the simplicity, it's really clean and sleek, and the button and color are vibrant and stand out really well against the website's header. And also, again, with a little bit of psychology here, see how they put their logo in the upper left-hand corner and then place the donate button in the upper right-hand corner? This mimics how we read from left to right. You can't miss it. And then this was coupled with a really impactful statement, front and center, I think for a image focused web page and the button the me, the button and the message stand out really well to me. What do you guys think? And though you can't tell now um, because this is a static image, uh, but as you scroll through the website and navigate to different pages, the donate button at the top stays put. Again, we call this a sticky button. This is important. So Visitors don't have to click back or navigate to another page. Maybe their page lags as they're trying to find it and then they get frustrated and they log off. Make sure you have that donate button stick everywhere your donor goes, like a puppy that follows you around. I just made that up. I think that's cute. Um, and then as you click the donate button, it takes users to a secure donation page with an embedded form. This form provides multiple ways to donate, such as pre-filled amounts, donation tiers, recurring donations, and employer matching. They're using all of the goodies. Page design is awesome. Looks good. Thanks, guys, for your feedback. Okay, moving on to optimization tip number two, show real world impact. Showing real world impact right in your donation form is pretty easy. You can accomplish this by using donation tiers. Donation tiers or donation levels offer donors choices uh, in the form of predetermined donation amounts. Rather than leaving a blank space for the donor to enter an amount, donation tiers provide benchmarks. They are essentially, again, suggested levels of giving that donors can choose from. And next to each suggested amount, there's typically a description of what that amount will accomplish. You're contextualizing, and contextualizing your donation tiers does three things. One, it gives a reason for why you selected these specific donation amounts. You aren't just pulling these numbers out of thin air. You have a specific goal to reach with specific donations. And two, it shows your donors what their donations actually do. This makes your giving feel more purposeful and connected to your mission. And three, 
it encourages donors to give more. When a donor sees what a higher level of giving can accomplish, they're more likely to give at that level. Pretty simple. And just taking five minutes out of your day to create donation tiers in your form could increase donations as much as 12%. I think that's pretty good and well worth it for such a small task. So if your nonprofit is strategic about your donation tiers, it can help maximize donations in a really significant way. So here are some tips on how to decide on donation tiers for your nonprofit. To set donation levels at the right uh, level for your organization, you need to first gather data. You can use donor management software like DonorBox or Salesforce or Blackbaud, whatever you're using, to see your average donation. What is the amount most of your donors give? If a large portion of your supporters give less than 20 bucks, don't have the lowest suggestion, the lowest suggestion be 70. Doing that might discourage people from donating, right? And this works the other way around too. If most of your donors make gifts over 200, don't, don't lead them into contributing less than they normally would by setting the highest donation level at 150, right? So knowing the average amount that your donors can give helps you determine your lowest and your highest donation level. Donation tiers must be researched. They must be realistic and they must be relevant to an organization and its goals in order to be effective. Again, do not pull these numbers out of thin air. And with that, in mind, you should though push just a little bit. While it's important to avoid discouraging donors by suggesting an amount that's too high, you want to push the donation levels as well as the suggested pre selected donation amount just a teeny, teeny, teeny little bit higher than your average gift size. So if your average gift size is, you know, 50 bucks, suggest 55 bucks. That might seem like a small increase that anybody can handle and it's gonna have that compounding effect. All right. So next tip, tie donation tiers to specific outcomes. We already talked about this very briefly. So to each donation tier, add a sentence about what this donation will buy, provide, or supply. This will supply five families with shelter, one week of school for one child, a school supplies for 10 children for a month. Doing this makes these gifts more tangibly meaningful to the supporter and creates that all important transparency between your organization and your supporters. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard that Donors don't know how their donation made an impact. They know it helped, but they don't know the specifics. And this tells them right here in the forum how they're helping and in what way. Transparency is super, super important. And then finally, make sure your donation tiers make sense for your organization. The Average giving amount, even though I just really harped on this, shouldn't be the only thing informing your decision. For example, if your nonprofit's fundraising strategy targets first time or lower level donors, you might want to list dollar amounts from $20 to $100, working to elicit those lower level gifts. If on the other hand, you're addressing higher level donors, you might want to list amounts from 100 to 5,000, implying an expected gift of much larger sums. So there can be a little bit of experimenting here. If you're not quite sure how to uh, approach this, you don't have enough data yet. Great thing about donation tiers is that you can take just a minute to add these in and experiment. Try it out for a couple of weeks. If you're not sure if it's quite right, go back in, edit it, try a different level of tiers. So I wanna know. Drop in the chat, everyone, how would $100, or what would $100 buy, supply, or provide for your nonprofit? Do you know that right off the bat? Or if not $100, what would $20 buy, provide, or supply? 
let's see let's see those responses coming in an hour of personal training for 10 seniors meals for 50 kids that's amazing 10 hours of respite care two days of camp for a student hundred dollars will provide tuition for a child for a whole year 20 families food for one week hundred dollars prize 500 meals that's incredible books bibles cases of water emergency food for haiti 75 let's see 75 would provide the responses are coming in fast y'all i'm trying to keep up <laughs> $100 pays for online tutoring for 10 underprivileged students a month. This is incredible. If you are not telling your donors how that 100 bucks is impacting the community that you serve, you have this information. It's right here in the chat box. You need to share this with them. This is very, very, very important. $100 would get seven award-winning books to children who need them most. I love that. Sylvia, what are your favorite award-winning books? I used to be a children's librarian in a different life. <laughs> Thank you all for sharing. Okay, we're moving on to optimization tip number three. And again, this is an easy one, a no-brainer. And if you have logged on to our webinars before, you will know that one thing that I say time and time again during our webinars is, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. This could not be truer for asking donors for ongoing support. Give your donors the option to support your organization on an ongoing basis by including a monthly, quarterly, or annual recurring option on your donation form. Donor retention rate is one of the most important metrics for a nonprofit. Recurring donors are incredibly valuable. Not only do most donations tri trickle in from existing donors, but gaining new relationships is always more costly than cultivating existing ones. And while there are numerous best practices for boosting donor retention rates, one of the easiest is to offer recurring donations as an option on your donation form. When you offer recurring donations on your donation form, you not only make it easier for donors to give again and again, boosting that all important retention rate, but on average, donation amounts increase. And it's also important to keep in mind that very few donors will log back in to donate every month, which is why automating the process makes all the difference. So, Pre-selecting monthly giving on your online donation page can increase conversions of monthly donations as opposed to one-time donations by up to 35%. That's a big percentage. And on average, recurring donors will give 42% more annually than a one-time donor. This is, I cannot, Harp on this enough, this is predictable revenue that you can depend on for your nonprofit. This is really important. And though this tip is extremely simple, you can set this up again in just a minute, and I'm gonna be saying this all throughout this webinar, it's, you just take a minute, take a minute. Um, and it's gonna have a huge impact. If you do not have a monthly, if you don't have monthly as a default selection, or favorite selection, you need to do this today. You are missing out. All right, Abjoy, if you could please launch assignment one for me. Everyone, be sure to download the PDF that just launched uh, for assignment one. This will help you walk through your donation form optimization. We have included an easy checklist and some relevant links to help you throughout this process. And if you've lost this, you can navigate up to your handouts tab um, over here in the upper right hand corner uh, to uh, click on it to download later on. All right, how are we feeling y'all? Are we ready? Are we ready to move on? 
Okay. Thumbs up. Thanks everyone. I appreciate the feedback. <laughs> We've got a good crowd today. Thanks for being here. Okay, now that you've got some tips on how to optimize your donation form, I want you to think of that donation form as a home. And within your home, you can host events for your friends and for your family, such as Thanksgiving, anniversaries, birthday parties, holiday parties. So now think of a crowdfunding page as one of those events. Crowdfunding is a great way it's like it's great for those one-off campaigns like giving tuesday year-end fundraisers disaster relief um emergency funds to buy a new truck for your uh farm whatever that is crowdfunding is great for that so i have a joy i'm keeping you busy today uh will you please launch our next poll i want to know have you utilized crowdfunding for a fundraising campaign before and this is about the response I was expecting. The majority of you are saying no. So I'll give it just a few more seconds and we're gonna address that. Okay. Yeah, that's, um, that's about what I was expecting actually. Thank you all for participating in that. So if you answered no, I wanna know why. Is it that you don't really know what crowdfunding is? Um, Maybe you've been intimidated by setting that up. Uh, you weren't sure what to use it for. Um, what do you think? What's prevented you from using crowdfunding? How to set it up to be successful. Don't feel ready yet. Seem too ambitious at this point. I promise it's not scary at all. Again, uh, for a millennial, I am not a techie whatsoever. If I can do it, you can do it, truly. Don't know how. The actual application, not ready yet. Lack of knowledge. Okay, we are here to ease your fears, walk you very easily into the power of crowdfunding. I love, 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 love our crowdfunding pages. And this is why. The absolute best thing about DonorBox's crowdfunding platform is that it's designed to let nonprofits drive strong engagement with their donor base and supporters by including them in their cause. Better yet, again, like non-techies like myself and like some of you as well, you can get a crowdfunding page up and running very easily in 15 minutes. That's it, just 15 minutes. And you can think of, Crowdfunding is like a mini storytelling website for your cause, which I think is really cool. So um, beyond the amazing engagement that crowdfunding can create, it also yields impressive results. For every time I say that I love something, I wanna give you a stat to back it up. So crowdfunding generates $17.2 billion dollars annually in North America. A lot of people have jumped on this bandwagon already. And the global crowdfunding market is projected to grow by $300 million by 2030, which suggests that this fundraising strategy is anything but a trend. And I'm gonna go over some really amazing crowdfunding features that you absolutely need to utilize once you enable your crowdfunding page. Hang on, there we go. All right, so optimization tip number one for your crowdfunding pages. And this will kind of give you a great highlight of what these pages have to offer. Keep your supporters in the loop. Your crowdfunding page will allow your page visitors to subscribe to your campaign without donating and your donors will automatically be added to your subscription list. You can send personalized email updates to all of your subscribers. You can also use your crowdfunding page to post updates to talk about your campaign, progress, and goals. You can add images and videos to showcase your impact of your campaign. And these can also be sent as updates to your supporters. And a pro tip here, 
if you have your crowdfunding campaign running for a month, send weekly updates to your supporters. It only takes a few minutes. Again, it only takes a few minutes. Um, and if your campaign is running for a week, send daily updates. Sending updates will keep your campaign alive and your donors informed. Building the right rapport with your audience is necessary. It's so necessary for your campaign. And it's a great way to build trust and buy-in with all of your supporters. Now, if sending updates sounds a little intimidating, um, I like to put it in this perspective. You, you probably have your nonprofit on social media and you're having to go to Facebook, to Instagram, to LinkedIn to post updates. What's so great is if you do not have the capacity to do that. Um, crowdfunding, you can do it all in one tidy place. You can post your updates to your supporters right there. And there's also very easy social media sharing buttons within that. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. So optimization tip number two for crowdfunding is to provide social proof. With our crowdfunding pages, you can enable a donor wall that updates automatically and allows you to harness the power of social media, a uh, social proof, there we go, to encourage more donations to your campaign. Donor Box's automated donor wall meets your donors where they care, creating a forum of shared interest, continuous campaign updates, and public donor recognition that drives new donations from like-minded people. If you've ever made decisions because of facts presented to you, videos or images you've seen, comments of people you admire, then you have been under the influence of social proof. Uh, another way to put this, just as good reviews of a restaurant might convince you to dine there, great social proof for your nonprofit will compel your visitors to subscribe and donate. Using a donor wall is a great way to gain donations and increase your project goal. And people will be able to see and donate to your campaign and leave a positive comment, which is fun for everybody to see. And you'll appear as a successful and validated nonprofit. And this social proof will be super, super persuasive to other potential donors. And again, it makes donors feel appreciated and validated right away. And in a donor-centric mindset, this is really important. And I see a lot of questions coming in. Don't worry all, we will have Q&A at the end here and I've got the team diligently marking those questions for me for the very end. Okay, so optimization tip number three for your crowdfunding page is to create a sense of urgency. Using a goal meter is a great way to do this. As donors see the meter's progress towards your fundraising goal, they'll be driven to help reach that goal. It's a recipe for engagement, and it can increase overall giving by up to 35% on average over fundraising pages that don't use a goal meter. Again, that's a big percentage. And similar to the psychology of a donor wall that uh, that a donor wall has on a donor when supporters see that others have already contributed to a particular cause they'll be far more likely to donate themselves better yet goal meters track donations that come in from various giving avenues online email text to give and they self update to help your nonprofit track its fundraising goals. You don't have to go in there manually to update your goal meter every single time you get a donation. And this makes this a phenomenal tool for internal use in addition to it being used externally to encourage giving. So like I said, overall increase by 35%. So Let's talk a little bit more about how goal meters work. And uh, you might also know these as for fundraising thermometers. Uh, here we call them goal meters. So with goal meters, fundraising goals are clear and visible. Goals are more likely to be achieved if a donor can clearly see the fundraising progress and they can easily visualize their impact. We're visual creatures and visuals are more shareable. 
This means that donors are far more, like, far more likely to share your donation link if it includes an immediately recognizable image like a goal meter. And immediate gratification works. Seeing the goal meter rise gives donors a rush of instant gratification, making them more likely to give again. And again, success attracts. Everyone likes to be a part of something that's successful and working. And goal meters paint that picture to donors. And finally, I love this one. Emotional connection plus urgency equals conversion. I'm gonna repeat that. Emotional connection plus urgency equals conversion. You've created an emotional connection through the storytelling capabilities of your crowdfunding page at this point. And you've created a sense of urgency with the goal meter. The combination of these two things will drive your supporters into action. Okay, Abajoy, I think we are ready to launch assignment number two, if you would please. And there it is. So be sure to download that PDF to learn how to activate your very own crowdfunding page. Again, we've included easy check boxes to walk through along with relevant links to blogs and videos to help you with this process. I promise you, we are going to dis demystify this process for you and you're gonna have so much fun creating your crowdfunding page. Even if you're not creative or tech savvy, I promise you, you're gonna have a blast and I'm really excited to see what they look like. So we are nearing the end before we get into Q&A, but before we go into that, I want to take a moment to showcase an organization that really rocked their crowdfunding. McIntyre House is a nonprofit substance abuse recovery home for men that raised over $30,000 in a campaign to keep them in operation for 2021. This campaign used crowdfunding to generate nearly $15,000 in individual online donations, $10,000 in matching donations, and $5,000 in mail-in donations. This is the kind of success story we love to see at DonorBox, both because we know how nonprofits do important work and because we love to see a nonprofit use all of the tools available to them to reach their goal. So let's take a look about how take a look at how Mick and Tear House crafted the perfect fundraising campaign to help them raise that $30,000 in just 12 days. Okay, just look at the first sentence if you can, if you can see it, look at the first sentence in their details section. Help us keep the lights on. Wow, that is a very compelling CTA. And what I love about this specific campaign is that they took advantage of all of the features our crowdfunding pages have to offer, like I mentioned. They gave their visitors the details, but kept it short and sweet right there on the main page, what you're seeing there, that's your details page. Uh, and they inserted a video to make it more compelling and to do some really great storytelling in a very simple way. So here they're telling you what their mission is. They're aiming to keep their lights on for 2021. And then they're showcasing Doug's story um, to really pull at your heartstrings there. And next to this, Making Your House enabled their donor wall to provide social proof and validate their potential and current supporters. They've also enabled their goal meter to make their goals clear and visible and create that sense of urgency. And as you can see here, they've also embedded their social media pages for easy sharing that will increase their reach and their impact. One click and your whole campaign is shared on social media. I love that. And here are some examples of the updates that McIntyre House posted. They did such a good job of keeping their donors and subscribers engaged by posting updates and content consistently throughout their 12-day campaign, complete with stories and progress reports. The storytelling kept up momentum of giving, encouraging those who had not donated yet, donated yet to give, especially with the compelling incentive of the donor match event that they held, where one of their top donors agreed to match all donations up to $10,000. And McIntyre House met this goal because of their regular updates, impressive storytelling, and clear sense of purpose. 
Now, I know many of you joining today are small nonprofits, and you're probably thinking, this seems like a lot. It's not. This is something that any nonprofit can try. You don't need to have a fancy camera and a video editor to create a video to update your supporters. A smartphone works just as well. And you can also use images to tell a story and say thank you like image three. So if you run a preschool, post a picture of some art that your children have made and share that. You made this possible. Look what you did with your $5 donation. Uh, if you run a rescue, post some cheeky pictures of your dogs or your cats with funny subtitles saying, hey, thanks for donating. Really, you can get very creative. The point is to tell your story in your own way and update frequently. All right, we have made it, you all. I know that was a lot of information. I hope that you are feeling confident and ready to go forth. So approaching the world of digital fundraising as a non-techie can feel overwhelming, but I promise you the good news is that you do not have to do it alone. And sometimes all it takes is just a minute to see the huge results by making your call to action, that donate button on your website, blog or email stand out and stick as much as possible, you're already on your way to a solid digital fundraising strategy. And in five minutes, you can create some real world outcomes to your suggested donation tiers to make your donors understand how valuable their donations truly are. You can also easily make monthly recurring donations a pre-selected item on your donation form, meaning more donors will consider supporting your work with steady contributions. And just with a little more time, just a couple more minutes, you can create a crowdfunding page full of moving storytelling that can help you harness the power of the crowd to support your mission. And once that page is created, you can keep the momentum going by providing regular updates to your donors and providing social proof with their donor wall to encourage even more donations. So revamping your digital fundraising doesn't have to require a lot of technical know-how, especially if you have the right tools. And DonorBox is here to help you every step of the way to optimize, prioritize, and grow your online fundraising. Okay, so I wanna talk about what's next before we jump into Q&A. First of all, let's take a minute. How's everyone feeling? Are you feeling ready to take on your donation page and form? Are we feeling excited, born ready? I love that. Yes, this is the type of response I like to see. I'm so glad. Again, as a fellow non-techie, um, even when I started this job, I said, look, I don't know how to unlock an iPhone. They're like, don't worry, you can still use the campaign creator. And they were so right. Um, I'm so glad that you are feeling ready. And I promise you, you're gonna have so much fun. So before we jump into Q&A, I want to make sure that you join the DonorBox knowledge community to participate in the Power Up discussion forum and share your assignments. So there's the link right there in your bottom left-hand corner. Go ahead, click that. Join now. And this is where you'll find our level one toolkit complete with the recording and assignments and slide deck, if I didn't say that already. Uh, so if you didn't uh, download your handouts today, you'll find those there as well. And this is where you will share your assignments with everybody for feedback. So with that, make sure that you join us next time at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next Tuesday to talk about communication and engagement tools to strengthen your donor trust. This is gonna be a really, really good one. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and move to Q&A. We've got about 10 minutes, you guys, and I've got a special treat. I am pulling up my dear colleague, Killian. He is coming in all the way from Lisbon, Portugal um, to help tackle our Q&A section because we've got a lot here. So let's see. Hello, Jenna. Congratulations, that was a fantastic presentation. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks so much. Um, everybody, Killian is the European Development Manager of DonorBox. Uh, he wears a lot of hats. Uh, he is our fundraising pro, and he backs me up on all of these uh, types of sessions. So without further ado, Killian, are we ready to tackle the Q&A? I believe we are, yes. I'm going to start Excellent. in um, chronological order, if I can say that word correctly. And we'll start from our lovely Karen, I believe, in Zurich, Switzerland. Okay. You, Karen. Um, are three amounts best practice, or would six also work? Okay. So this really does depend on your nonprofit. So typically, you want your middle ask to be the number that you want your donor to give. So, for example, if you're asking for... 10 euros, 25 euros, or 50 euros, or 10, 25, whatever currency, the middle ask is what you're looking for your donors to actually give. The way it looks on the form, it's best for either odd numbers. Uh, usually odd numbers work better on the forms. Um, six can be a bit much sometimes, so I'd keep it maximum five if I were, if I were standing up here. Yes, I agree. And if you're not using euros, you can also use dollars. <laughs> My apologies, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. We have many people logging in from overseas. Um, so thank you so much, Karen, for that question. Um, and then... um, so from Tracy, I'll go ahead and tackle this one. What if you're brand new and you don't have the data yet to collect your donation tiers? Um, like I said, Tracy, it just takes a little bit of experimenting and also some soul searching. What is the type of donor that you're looking for? Are you targeting those first time low level donors? Are you looking for those higher level big gift donors? Uh, so think about your fundraising strategy if you've got one in place and try to emulate that within your donation tiers. And again, the great thing about donation tiers is that they're not permanent. You can, uh, um, again, uh, change them as you see fit. Uh, so um, it's really based upon your fundraising strategy and the type of donor that you're trying to rake in. Uh, Killian, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, it's all about trial and error as well. I would say maybe try for one month um, a certain set of asks, then the next month try a different set, see what works best. If you see your donation go up, keep going and see what happens in the, next, in the following months. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, let's see. Next one from Erica. So can the monthly tab be the first one uh, to stimulate them to choose uh, this one as opposed to one time. So, oh, go ahead, Killian. <laughs> At the moment, we do have the option of having monthly by itself. Having monthly on the left-hand side, going left to right, we don't actually have that. I will feed that back to our product team, actually. Um, but we do have a lot of nonprofits who will have their own dedicated monthly page or recurring page where they will only have the monthly or weekly or annually um, interval option specifically for that particular campaign. So maybe give that a try. That would be a good way to to encourage people. Absolutely. And uh, you can also favorite monthly. So donors will see the little heart on the monthly tab so they know that this is um, preferred. So uh, that is a good option as well. And let's see. So I love this question, Erica. What is the difference between crowdfunding and fundraising campaigns? Um, and do not apologize. This is kind of a new world for everybody. So. Again, um, fundraising campaign, uh, donation pages, they can be there all year round, right? And it's just a general donate to our cause. Uh, what's great about crowdfunding is that it's for these specific one-off events. So again, think of your donation form as a home and your crowdfunding as that party that you're throwing within your home. So crowdfunding is great for um, things that have a deadline. Uh, you saw, for example, 12 Days of McIntyre. They had 12 days to raise those funds for 2021. Uh, so Giving Tuesday, um, disaster relief, whatever that may be, uh, it's for a very specific goal. Killian, anything to add there? Yeah, a sense of urgency is created with crowdfunding, and it does offer nonprofits the ability to update their um, how they're getting along with their fundraising progress, and also email their donors with these updates much easier than picking out individual emails. So urgency is created, and communication is enhanced with crowdfunding. Thank you there. And Dallin, we already answered your question there. Yes, we do offer crowdfunding. Uh, let's see. Judith, um, all right, is crowdfunding useful when you currently only have a limited amount of donors? Yes, it is, because crowdfunding pages 
are highly shareable. They're super engaging. So if you only have a limited amount of donors, it makes it really easy for them to share your campaign with others. And that's why we call it crowdfunding. You're harnessing the power of the crowd. It really reaches a lot of people in that way that will really help you um, make an impact. Anything to add, Killian? That's, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. Um, so, oh, there we go. Actually, I love this question. Daniel, um, many of your donors like to be anonymous. How can you encourage them to leave their name and comment? Well, guess what? They can donate anonymously and still leave a comment. That's one of the great things um, about that, as uh, I know a lot of donors who give um, are very humble, and they don't Feel like they need to show their name that they've given, uh, but they can still leave a comment um, and a donation anonymously, which is a really great feature. Okay, uh, Killian, I'll let you pick one out. Sure. Um, let's see. There was one there I saw. Yeah, we get this question quite a lot. So the difference between the donor wall and a goal meter. So a goal meter is the sort of the visual representation of how your campaign is progressing financially. So for example, at the top of your donation form, you will see a bar that goes across. So let's say your goal is $100. If $10 was raised, 10% of the, of the meter will be filled in, $50, 50%, and so on. The donor wall is within crowdfunding where a donor or within within any sort of campaign actually on donor box where a donor can make their comment public for the public to see so they can make a comment and it will show up on the campaign itself so those are two differences there thank you thank you um and as you're entering that i was scrolling through i saw a common theme here how can i embed this into my website my you know a donate button donation form we have tutorials for all of these things, whether you're using WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, uh, check out our blog and our YouTube. And I will also include those links in our post event email so that you have the opportunity to click and check those out. So it's very easily integrated. And we have embed forms for everything. So for your goal meter, for your donate button, uh, you can easily copy and paste it uh, into um, wherever you want it to go. All right, scrolling through here, we have just enough time for maybe one more question. So I want to end with a bang. Killian, let me know if you see a super, a super good one here. And you guys, don't fret if I didn't get to your, if we didn't get to your question today, you can ask your questions in the Power Up discussion forum, and we will work diligently to make sure that you have all the resources you need. I mean, in terms of fundraising, there's a good one here about addresses. I can oh, sure go go for it. Sweet. So, do you recommend requiring collection for address? So, this varies country to country, region to region. It depends on your fundraising strategy. If you are looking to send a personalized handwritten letter or a hand signed letter to your donor afterwards, which I always recommend, it would, it's best to obviously collect that address. If you are in a short-term fundraising position with no long-term fundraising strategy, there's no need to collect the address. Quick, snappy fundraising pages are great, but if you have a long-term goal for your donors to progress them into regular givers or to major givers, to legacies, collect their address as early as possible. That way you can have a better connection with your donors on a regular basis. That would be my... Perfect. Um, Couldn't have said it better. All right, everyone, um, I, we are at the top of the hour, so it is time for, for us to log off. Before we go, don't forget to check your email. We'll be emailing you our level one toolkit with those assignments and the recording, the slide deck, it is all there for you. Join the DonorBox Power Up Forum so that we can all chat, answer questions, and make sure that we're really on track for gearing up for the biggest giving season of the year. And everyone, I want to thank you for all that you do for your community and all that you do to serve others. We here at DonorBox are so proud to provide the tools and resources you need to help you help others. So. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Killian, for hopping on and Abajoy for being behind the scenes. And um, we will see you next Tuesday for communication and engagement, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do not forget, we won't let you. Okay.
All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>